Good morning. Welcome to the show. I'm LaShondra. And I'm Corinne. And together we're Everyday CNA. Hey, today on the show, we're going to be talking about a special event that's going to be happening at the end of the week. Um, it's going to be about hospice and palliative care. And we have a NACA member joining us from Virginia. And here she is now. Welcome, Celeste, to our show. Uh, we're glad to have you this morning. Thank you. Hey, we have a, um, a few questions that we would like to um, ask you. So I'm going to read them off my cheat sheet. The first one is, what motivated, uh, what motivated you or inspired you to become a hospice CNA? What motivated me was the fact that I took care of my grandparents. And I also grew up with a mom who was a nurse. So I've been around nursing all my life. And um, what kept me in hospice was the fact that I was given the ability to be able to um, comfort those who were in the end of life. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. The second question I have for you is kind of like a two-part question. So the first part is, could you take us through your normal routine um, as a hospice CNA? Um, my normal routine is um, when we first get an admission, I will call the patient. Um, I will let them know who I am, what I come in to do. Um, and I will also do that when I go to their house um, so that they can put a face to the phone call. And we go over um, their likes, dislikes, um, what they're most comfortable with. Um, we do have a care plan that we go by for the CNAs to um, look at for their um, what they're supposed to be doing when they're with that patient. Some patients um, change from admission almost to the time we start going in. So someone who may be been ambulatory at admission. It may not be ambulatory when we get there. So our cha our care plan will actually change. Um, we've had some care plans change within 24 hours. Mm -hmm. um, so when I'm there with the patient, um, I'm going by my care plan, but I'm also um, doing a, a quiet, what I call a quiet observation. I'm looking how they're responding to everything I'm doing. I'm listening to the words that they're using and telling me when we're talking, as I'm explaining what I'm doing to them, I'm listening to, to their feedback. Um, and once the visit is all said and done, I'm watching how their, um, what I call the aftermath of the visit, um, they are, were they extremely sore or were they really sleep or, you know, did, did things hurt when I did certain things? Because this is all stuff that I will have to report to the nurse as soon as I um, leave the patient's house. So. Um, basically, uh, I, like I've said before, observation and care doesn't stop at admission. It's ongoing. Okay. And the, the last part of that is, you know, LaShondra and I um, know what it's like to learn, um, not so much learn, but um, we're trained in certain areas, you know, long-term care, assistant living and all that. And the experience that we have with hospice is really, you know, from what we see you guys coming in. But do you feel um, that it's different for you as a CNA um, working in that type of setting? Or do you feel that you have the combination of all the settings in, in one setting, if that makes sense? I feel for me personally, that I have a combination of all because if a patient is in their home, I have to kind of adapt what I do to their home setting. Um, and re really home is wherever they live. But in like the long-term care, when I go into theirs, I kind of have to adapt what I do to their rules. Um, some of the girls will actually come in and I'll, I'll talk to them I'll explain to them what I'm there to do. And they, they will in turn have information for me and be like, well, this, she can't do such and such, but maybe there's a different way that you could show me how to do her when you're not here, Celeste. Mm -hmm. 
Um, so it, it's all about working together. So my, my specialty is a little bit different, but I feel like, you know, it's a combination of all of them. And it's something that I try to um, help everybody understand that when we go into these buildings and go into the hospitals and the long-term cares, we're adapting to what they're doing because we're all CNAs. We just all have different specialties that we do and we're going to intertwine at some point. Well, thank you. I well, think LaShonda has a few for you. Yes. Celeste, um, what can we do to help you provide a better service for our residents when you come into a long-term care facility? My biggest help is when I come in, if you notice any changes, um, if you notice um, any areas or, or, mar or, you know, bruisings and stuff like that, anything new, anything out of the ordinary um, that you know is not quite right with that particular resident, that helps me tremendously because when I go in there, I can base what you've told me, what I see, and at the end of my visit, be able to give a full, you know, a, a description to my nurse and be like, this is what the staff is seeing and this is what I saw. So, you know, maybe when she can come in and kind of put a full picture together, because the, um, I, I always say that my long-term care CNA partners that I call them, when I go in, you know, I, I advocate for them because they 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 see everything. I'm only there an hour every day to see this patient. You guys are there constantly, so you know it would only be, be beneficial to me to make sure that hey, okay, you tell me what you saw. I tell you what I saw. We work together, and that's how we take care of them. Do you feel they welcome you when you go into a facility? Yeah, at first they're kind of <laughs> like. Oh. Yeah, You know, but once they see that I'm not there to tell them what to do or I'm not there to be the tattletale, once they get to know me and how I operate, I, I usually have a good rapport with them. Now, there's still some that, you know, kind of feel like, mm, okay, you know, but I get that. That's, that's your space. That's your, you know, that's, that's your building. And you got an outsider coming in to take care of your residents. So I get it. But yeah. at the same time, mm -hmm. once they see that, I, that I'm there for the same exact reason they are and nothing else, that's all I'm there for. Um, I, I, I'm blessed in the fact that a lot of my buildings that I go into, I am good with a lot of the CNAs. I'm good with a lot of the staff. Sometimes they think I work there. They're like, Celeste, can you help us with this? I'm like, I don't work here. <laughs> um, so, you know, that that's the good part about it. But um, yeah. I think when other CNAs see that you're on the same team and you're not there to knock them down because you are from an outside agency, I think that helps a lot, so. Exactly, I can see exactly what you're saying because when you do come in to, you know, like if you would come into LaShonda and my facility, it'd be like, like our territory, like that's our resident, like what are you going to do, yes. you know, to him, you know. But that, that's awesome. I know it takes a special person um, to work in the hospice field. Is there anything that you feel um, us as CNAs would benefit us to know about hospice? I try to get everybody to understand that hospice is not about dying. Hospice is about living. Yes. And I always tell people, because one of the things that they always say when they see us come in is, how much time do I got left? Mm -hmm. oh, yes. I don't know. That's, that's between you and, you know, I say, I'm not here to help you die. Yeah. I'm here to help you live. Yeah. Whatever time you got left. And we're going to make memories and do what we can do. And so I would say to, I, my goal is to take the, the fear out of hospice. Because as some of you guys know, I was in hospice. Right. You know, yes. and working in it and being a patient in it is two different things. But it taught me to 
learned that, yeah, the, the medical side of it, yes, hospice is six months or less. I had hospice patients that was with me two and three years. And so I, I tell people hospice is just an extension of care. That's all it is. It is an extension of care for whatever is going on. And, you know, we actually do get some people that graduate from hospice, well, what we call graduate. And right. we, you know, and we throw a big party, we buy cakes, we give them a graduation <laughs> cap, we do it all. <laughs> and, you know, and then the ones that leave us, that, that you know, stay with us until the end, we celebrate their life. Yes. So hospice is just, it's all it is. It's, it's not a big scary word like some people make it out to be. And that's right. one thing that, you know, before I am leaving this earth, that somebody can say about me is that I made people understand that hospice is not a scary thing. Well, hopefully a lot of our members will be um, watching this interview and um, maybe even some of the CNAs at our facility will be watching it. And maybe when they see you and by hearing the statement that you just made, maybe some of them are kind of standoffish towards you um, because they do see you as like the deaf person coming in. So maybe by them hearing, you know, actually what your goal is, maybe that will um, help you grow, you know, better relationships with the staff members that you see. Yes. I have one more thing, Celeste, like the families. Yes, ma'am. The families, do you guys like talk to the families, like explain to them that it's not a death sentence, you know? It's just because some of them do. doesn't. Yes. Go ahead. We do. We, we explain it, but we also have to remember that during this time, they have doctors telling them that their family member is going to die. Yes. You've got people coming in your house, you know, telling you different things. So we, we may tell them but they're not processing it yet. Mm -hmm. All they're hearing is hospice, loved ones in a hospital bed, they're taking yes. medicines. So I just try to, um, what I call meet them where they're at. I don't push my idea on them, but I just let them know that, you know, I'm here to do whatever I can. Mm -hmm. And, you know, medicines are not gonna take anybody any faster. You know, so I was like, don't, don't dwell on that dwell on every day that you get to get up with your loved one, making it a good day, making it a good yes. memory, you know, and if they're having a bad day, you roll with it. Every day is not going to be perfect, but you roll with it. So that's one thing I can say that I, I, I like talking to our families about because I yeah. think sometimes yeah. they, they feel like they're forgotten. It's all about yes. the patient and the, and the families get forgotten. I love that statement that you just made, meet them in the middle, is that correct? Mm -hmm. Meet them where they are. Yeah, that to me, that comes across as a very powerful statement, but it's so meaningful when you said that, because when you said that, it was just like a light bulb went off. And that's something that I'm glad that you, you are doing, but that's also something that I hope our viewers um, that are watching this interview I hope they get that aha moment, like that light bulb, because that's something we should all be doing with our residents and our clients and our patients yes. is not putting so much expectations out there, but just meeting them where they're at. I, I really like that. Thank you for sharing yes. that. Mm -hmm. Well, that's all the questions I have. LaShondra, do you have yes. anything no, else? That's or? all I have. Okay. okay. Well, thank you um, for joining us yes. and being part thank of, of the show. Me. Thank um, you. Oh, you're welcome. Um, keep doing what you're doing and keep being awesome. You guys do the same. <laughs> <laughs>